Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Great day that we're having here. We've got a tremendous amount to talk about, including but not limited to some things that are happening that we never thought we would see, which is another Half-Life game. <gasps> Spoilers, I'll talk about that later on in Hot News after we go ahead and talk about today's video sponsor, Displate, because I just today, got a delivery of new disc plates and I, I'm gonna show them to you. So they sent me a total of 10 disc plates, but uh, I'm gonna show you my three favorites. I have this Ryzen Threadripper, check this out, like a, a breakout of, of Threadripper, amazing. Then we have the officially licensed Cyberpunk 2077 stuff, Samurai, love it. And then also this really cool negative space Goku setup, amazing, look at that, that's gorgeous. Anyways, they're dope metal prints that mount on your walls with magnets. Fantastic stuff, I love them so much. And for every display you buy, you save, or they plant 10 trees, which helps to save the environment. And then on top of that, if you use our link in the video description, displate.com forward slash UFD tech official, and you enter coupon code UFD, you save 15% off on your purchase, but they're always running sales, extra sales. As long as you use our link, we get credit for it, but then you can you know, save up to 35% in a lot of their sales. So go ahead and do that. Check out Dope Metal Prints. I need to get these mounted on the wall in the new studio because we're in the United States. And in case you have no idea what that's about, check that video out right up there. And we went with the green screen background for this video. So let me know what you think instead of the sound blanket that we did for yesterday's hot news. Hopefully, Catelyn's gonna meme it up today. I don't know what that is. Catelyn, do your, your magic, your meme magic. I'm John Cena! And I'm gonna do my hot news magic. So, first up is the title, which is some information coming out about AMD's next generation graphics cards, which according to a chip hell leaker who previously disclosed things such as their RX 590, as well as the fact that the Radeon 7 would be launching in Q1 of last year, he's pretty good at when it comes to the track record of disclosing AMD stuff, and that is we should be getting next generation Navi graphics cards unveiled for us at CES 2020. So less than two months away, and we will be seeing the RDNA 2 generation of graphics cards, which currently the 5700 and 5700 XT are based on RDNA regular. So RDNA 2 should be the next generation and whether and what that brings is not exactly clear. Apparently it's going to be on 7 nanometers plus. It will have enthusiast grade desktop graphics cards which currently they're kind of mid-range not the highest enthusiast end so hopefully hardware level ray tracing support so that they can uh, optimize for that. I mean we're expecting that to be next generation consoles next year so it would make sense that it comes to desktop hopefully first and then also interestingly enough a mixture of GDDR6 and HBM2 memory on the cards which is intriguing because we thought HBM2 went the way of the dinosaur with Radeon 7 but thanks to the development of HBM2E it looks like it might actually be financially viable in certain cards to continue to use HBM2 especially with its faster memory throughput. And then on top of that, more power efficient than the first generation Navi cards. And if you can recall from the initial launch of Navi, what we found out is that our DNA isn't actually completely a brand new architecture. It's using the instruction set of GCN still, and it's expected that with RDNA 2, the instruction set will change over to full RDNA. So it's kind of a hybrid that we're getting with Navi right now, whereas the next generation cards will be what AMD's vision for them is supposed to be and not just holding on to legacy instruction sets, but then also moving forward. So that's exciting. It's also something that's not necessarily unexpected considering the fact that AMD did unveil Zen 2 and Radeon 7 at CES last year. They made a big deal of everything and talking about that at the keynote at CES so it could be expected that they're going to do that again this year and if they do you'll know that here on UFD Tech we'll be live streaming that event with the coverage there because just with my son's health issues I can't really travel right now so I won't be going to Vegas directly for CES 2020 but hopefully I'll be able to be there in person for 2021. Anyways, exciting stuff about AMD's next generation graphics cards, whether it be called the 5900 XT or something else, we'll have to wait and see. But in case you're interested in AMD's past offerings, yesterday we talked about how the 1900X is on sale on Amazon for $150. Well, if you want a more mainstream desktop class processor, the Ryzen 7 2700X is on sale on Amazon right now for $188.89. Yes, a bit more expensive than, I, I think I said the 1800, I meant the 
1900X, the Threadripper chip. The 2700X, a bit more expensive, but has better IPC and better clocks than the 1900X and can be used on a lot more motherboards. So $190 if you want to use the link in the video description. That's an Amazon affiliate code. We get some credit for it, but then you also get a decent processor. Maybe pick it up. And with a lot of the deals that we've been seeing on chips like the 2700X. They've been mostly exclusive to places such as Micro Center, which if you live in Florida like I do, there's not a Micro Center in this entire state and it's a five hour drive to get there. And so a 10 hour total round trip, not feasible for me. So seeing a deal like this on Amazon is highly appetizing. But speaking of appetizing, Biostar gave us some appetizing information regarding the B550 generation of motherboards that's expected to come out, saying that they're ready to go more or less. And this is not a shock to anybody they has been rumored for a while that they would be coming out. When we were at Computex, we had some people tell us that it would be Q1 of 2020. And as we're getting later into this year, it does seem like that's probably going to be the release date for it. But then also the Biostar uh, person did talk about some uh, details regarding Intel's next generation chipsets for their motherboards, including Z490, B460, and H410, which are supposed to be on the Comet Lake S lineup, considering the fact that Intel didn't really launch anything this year besides the 9900KS Special Edition. And the Comet Lake S is supposed to be another 14 nanometer iteration. Not, not a whole lot of exciting stuff going on there. But what is exciting is if you use Ryzen processors for MATLAB, which uh, for some instances has actually been slower than an Intel's counterpart due to the fact that MATLAB can use Intel's math kernel library, which in case you couldn't hear, it's Intel's math kernel library. So AMD wasn't running effectively on it, but somebody came out with a workaround that allows you to use AVX2 instruction sets instead, which can increase the performance from 20 to 300% faster based on uh, what exactly you're doing. So if you're using MATLAB and you wanted to use Ryzen, but we're worried about the slowdown, well, there you go. There's a workaround. And in case you wanted to work around the heat output of a 5700 XT, Power Color unveiled their 5700 XT Liquid Devil. Look at it. Okay, great. And then something that you're probably tired of looking at, RX 580s. They've been out on the market for how many years at this point? Going on two, maybe three? I can't even tell anymore. My life has been crazy this year. Anyways, MSI is apparently introducing another RX 580. RX 580 armor, another one. It has a new PCB, a new IO bracket, and a new cooler shroud. Great. Frosted Flakes. But speaking of another AMD GPU, the RX 5300 XT is apparently popping up in some HP product sheets, considering the fact that AMD hasn't announced the 5300 XT, and it's only supposed to be the 5300 and 5300M. This is quite intriguing because it's not been seen anywhere else. We'll have to see if this actually comes out, if it's a naming issue, or if it's a problem with HP in general, because HP just came out and talked about how they refused a buyout from Xerox. Yes, my friends, printer companies going after each other, although HP does a whole lot more and they do a whole lot less than they used to when they acquired Palm and then they shut down my favorite phone lineup with WebOS, the freaking Palm Pre, fantastic smartphone. Gosh dang it, HP, your freaking management screwed that up. Fire sale for the HP touchpads going on for $99. I'm having flashbacks right now. I'm so sorry. HP rejecting the acquisition offer from Xerox. We'll see if they end up rejecting that or if HP can turn their sinking ship around. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Valve is going to be unveiling a brand new Half-Life game on Thursday. Half-Life Alex is what's going to be coming out. It's supposed to be a full VR game that's going to be focusing on making sure that you experience VR and it's fully immersive. And this was actually one of the rumors that was floating around the internet regarding uh, the next generation Half-Life game and how Half-Life 2 really brought to the forefront a whole bunch of different um, game development techniques such as actual physics and all of that, well, the next step would obviously be for a Half-Life game to go into the realm of VR and push it, Valve's index in VR headset. So this would be a great money-making scheme for them, but also shows that they are clearly scared of the number three, can't le release episode three, can't release Half-Life three, can't release Dota three. Why? So Half-Life Alex, get more information on Thursday. We'll talk about that later. And then in case your favorite assistant is Cortana, I'm so sorry because Cortana is disappearing from Microsoft 
in a few regions, that is. In the United States, it's still gonna be around, but in the Great Britain, Australia, Germany, Mexico, China, Spain, Canada, and India, Microsoft is dropping Cortana support in those regions. Microsoft says that despite dropping Cortana in those regions, it's still an integral part of the company but they're also dropping support in the US for iOS and Android devices with Cortana at the end of January. So I don't know, but you know who's dropping out of companies? The CEO of T-Mobile is leaving as of April of next year. He's gonna be stepping away and the, the current COO and president, Mike Sivert or Sievert is going to be replacing John Ledger. Uh, it's been rumored that John Ledger might potentially take over WeWork considering that that CEO debacle has gone down. They denied the allegations and some people have said he's not in the running, but he says that he's not gonna be retiring and that he's still going to be on the board of directors for T-Mobile and this is obviously coming after the the fact that the US government has approved the merger of T-Mobile and Sprint to create another subpar network. Great, fantastic. Speaking of subpar, let's go ahead and talk about Google Stadia. Yeah, my friends. Well, while mine should be delivered today, and we're gonna absolutely do a video on Google Stadia, a lot of people got to check it out beforehand, and there's reviews all over the internet. And depending on what type of gamer you are, you absolutely should just stay away for right now, at least according to all the reviews that I'm being, I've been able to check out. Google has made some strides to include more games at launch than originally was included, including Final Fantasy 15, Metro Exodus, and a whole bunch, uh, 10 more games than were previously announced, but server stuff isn't looking too hot based on all of the reviews that I've seen. Obviously, there's been some deep dives by some companies, but for the most part, it does seem like it's unplayable in certain games such as uh, Destiny 2, where you actually have to shoot and fire things, and oh, the freaking input lag is out to wazoo. Not great. But then in games like Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're basically riding a horse, who cares if you get on the horse half a second later because you click the button. It's supposed to be a relaxed mode. They have cinematic mode. It makes sense that you're supposed to play a game like that in just a relaxed couch setting. So we'll actually give you our full uh, review of the Google Stadia as soon as it lands because mine did get shipped and it should be here tomorrow, today. I film these at night, so by the time you watch this, I should already have it. But speaking of more Google stuff, because this one's actually good, it's actually been revealed that Google Play Store's app recommendation system is powered by Alphabet Company's DeepMind AI machine learning algorithm to help promote the content that you wanna see. DeepMind's supposed to be one of the leaders in machine learning and in artificial intelligence, so the fact that Google is utilizing it makes sense. Nepotism, it's an Alphabet company, there you go. You know what else you go? Here's this DualShock 5 patent that has come out of the Japanese patent office. Kind of looks like a DualShock 4. Symmetrical analog sticks. I hate it. But this next article is actually kind of cool because Logitech has announced their adaptive gaming kit, which is built off of Microsoft's Xbox adaptive controller. They worked in partnership with Microsoft to bring this out, to bring more customization to um, people who have physical disabilities and making sure that they're able to play games, which is great uh, considering my son is physically disabled. This should be great for him in the future as soon as he's of game playing age and can actually appreciate them. But good job Logitech and Microsoft bringing out uh, stuff for the special needs community. Appreciate it. And then let's go ahead and close this episode off with some information about self-driving cars or electric cars. They're basically the same in my mind because I conflate Tesla with artificial intelligence, self-driving, and then also electricity. So there you go. But researchers at MIT's C-Cell program have implemented behavioral psychology into their artificial intelligence self-driving system to help increase the efficiency of making sure that the cars can predict what other people are doing by up to 25% greater accuracy, which means that they know which car is a jerk, which car is gonna flip you off, which car is gonna cut in front of you. It's all ridiculous. MIT making sure that the, your car actually knows who the bad offenders are and you're not gonna be that because your car is driving itself. Which let's speak about some more electric cars. BMW has unveiled a bit more information about their upcoming i4, which appears to go toe to toe with the Tesla Model 3. It's gonna have up to a 373 mile range on an 80 kilowatt hour battery, which is roughly uh, about the same efficiency of a Tesla Model 3, if not better, considering that the 75 kilowatt can get up to 322 months. It does look like uh, BMW 
BMW is investing a whole lot more into electric vehicles, and this should be a good one. This episode is freaking long. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was gonna be that long. And then Ford unveiled the Mustang Mach-E, which is supposed to be their like electric flagship that's coming out. And how is a Mustang a four-door SUV? What? I don't understand this. Apparently Ford is just deciding that the Mustang brand is not a sports car any longer. It's like a homely family vehicle with electricity. And if you look at the interior, it's basically a Tesla Model X. It's cool that they're copying. Just don't make it obvious when you copy their homework. Well, I'm not gonna copy anything any longer because I'm gonna be done with this episode of Hot News. Why don't you smash the like button if you enjoyed it? Why don't you check out Display down below at the link in the video description, display.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Pick up dope metal prints that mount on your wall with magnets. They're amazing. Plant trees, use coupon code UFD to save 15%. Uh, get subscribed. We're going to be doing a lot of content in the coming days. We got Google Stadia. We got computer bills. We got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. So uh, get subscribed for that. And I need to get some sleep. I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>